over the last year or so, I've visited seven provincial capitals uh, as part of my research for Crisis Group. Um, most recently, I was focusing on four provinces, uh, Faryab, Kunar, Paktia, and Kandahar, uh, trying to understand in these four areas that have been very strongly affected by the insurgency, what happens when you remove foreign troops. And in three of the four places, it's a pretty bad news story. In Paktia, the fourth place, it's a, it's a good news story. The insurgency has lost some momentum. Uh, and so it's a mixed picture. Paktia has a really strong tribal structure. Uh, the tribes themselves keep the peace in a lot of these places. And that's uh, been a history going back hundreds of years in Paktia, and actually in that part of the, of the southeast. Um, the, the tribes um, have formed uh, uh, militias uh, and acted uh, sort of in cooperation with the central government for hundreds of years. And we're seeing that uh, pattern reemerge with the formalization of what they call the Afghan local police. Uh, which is uh, basically an auxiliary police force. The Taliban themselves seem to be having a conversation about whether the fight is still worth having. Now that there are no uh, foreign soldiers in a lot of these districts, there are no foreign infidels to fight. This whole idea of jihad, this idea of rebellion against uh, you know, uh, unbeliever armies, uh, it, it sort of loses its logic in some ways in the absence of foreign troops. And it's interesting because uh, that dynamic actually uh, exists in many places across the country. Uh, but in other places, uh, the Taliban have uh, easily made a sort of rhetorical pivot from saying, okay, we're going to fight the infidels, to saying we're going to fight the munafikin, that is to say the betrayers of Islam, the, um, you know, the puppets of the, of the infidels. And so uh, it's, it's a fascinating uh, struggle within the insurgency now as uh, they have to redefine themselves and redefine their own mission uh, as the foreign troops leave.